Today I look at the considerations for adapting the concepts and the tools of modern portfolio theory to a day trading and swing trading context. Stay tuned. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. As a trader, you'll benefit from cost effective market access via multiple trading platforms and APIs. These enable trading and investing in any US stock, over 60 of the most liquid futures contracts, FX and CFDs. You can even diversify your portfolio by buying and selling other traders' strategies as investable assets themselves. So, if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link top right now or find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. Modern portfolio theory was initially designed for a longer term investment context, where portfolios are designed and then often retained for some duration of time. This is very different to the day trading and swing trading context, but with a number of adaptions, I believe that modern portfolio theory can be invaluable here also. So let's take a closer look at what some of those adaptations might be. So as stated in the introduction, modern portfolio theory really is targeted towards a longer term investing context, such as constructing an optimal portfolio of stocks in order to help maximize the reward to risk ratio. And so can these tools and techniques therefore be adapted to a shorter term trading context. So for example, day trading, swing trading, or even shorter term trading. Well, my personal opinion is that yes, they can. However, a number of adaptations are required in order to do this successfully. So in this and the next four episodes, I'm going to be taking a look at what those adaptations and those measures are. But let's take a very quick look now at the main areas. The first is the calculation of the expected return. In standard portfolio theory, this uses an average of return over a certain period in the past. But that, of course, assumes that you're going to be holding this for a long period of time. And in much shorter term trading, that isn't the case. And so there's an important adaptation here that's required. And I'll be covering this first one in detail as part of this episode. But let's just quickly take a look at the other areas first. The next is around portfolio construction and the rate of change of that portfolio. So because the portfolio will be changing on a day to day basis, there are certain things that we need to build into our process in order to take full advantage of modern portfolio theory. And this is what I'll be covering in the next episode. Next, we need to think about calculation timeframes. And here I'm of course referring to the calculation of standard deviation, for example, the expected return and correlation between assets. And again, because we're working in a much quicker changing environment with trading, there are a number of considerations here, including the recalculation intervals. And then finally, we need an adaptation for the conversion of monetary weightings and lot sizes. And this will need to include consideration of the asset calculation currencies. And there might be a number of conversions that we need to do here. So that's an overview of the topics that I'll be considering. But let's now go into a little bit more detail of the first one here, expected return. So the usual use case here is that we'll be holding a portfolio of assets for a period of time. And so we can look to average returns in the past to help give an indication of what returns will be in the future. And so if I quickly return to the Excel spreadsheet example we were using last time, just to show you how those expected returns were calculated here, for each asset, we calculated the daily expected return as the average of the daily returns over the previous period of time. 
But this calculation method serves no purpose at all. It makes no sense for a shorter term trading context. And there's a number of reasons for that. The first is that generally each position we have in a particular asset will be open for a different duration of time. And because when we open the trade, we probably don't know how long that will be open for, we have no idea what the expected return is likely to be. Secondly, there'll be periods of time when there are no positions open for an asset. And so at this point, there'll be zero return. Next, remember the calculation we did in the investment context assumed that we were going to be holding the asset long. But if, like me, you trade both long and short, then again, that previous method of calculating the expected return is a nonsense here. We can't use that method. And indeed, it gets even more complex when you think that at certain times you might actually be hedging on a position and holding it long to a degree while another position is short. So for example, if two strategies are working in tandem, this is certainly a possible use case. And so for all of these reasons, we can't use the standard method of calculating the expected return. So how can we do it? Well, my personal opinion here is that it has to be done based on the past performance of a particular strategy. And I'm talking here about a strategy as a whole, not any individual asset. Although you could break it down into individual assets for the strategy, although you won't have as much statistical significance there. And so this could be based on a number of methods. The first, of course, is by looking at backtest results. And if this is a brand new strategy, you'll have nothing else other than backtest results, of course. But what's better if you do have some track record here is to base it on your live trading results. And from one or the other here, you need to calculate what the expected return percentage is per period of time for all of those positions. And the reason it needs to be for a set consistent period of time is so that we are effectively normalizing it for strategies that have different trade durations. Now, all of this will become clear in a moment when I give an example. But in short, the period should match the period that's being used to calculate the risk or the standard deviation. So let's now take a look at an example that will hopefully enable this to make a lot more sense. So let's start off by thinking about a single trade. And let's say that that trade in this example lasted for 3.6 hours and had a return of 0.35%. And so a calculation can now be done for this single trade where we say that the return rate would have been 2.33% per day. And we simply do that by dividing the original return by the proportion of a full day that it lasted. And you can then perform that calculation for each and every trade in your live trading history or your backtest. So in this example, I'm going to keep things simple and assume we only have three trades. But of course, ideally, you'd be looking for thousands of trades in order to perform this calculation on. So trade one here is the trade that we've just calculated. And let's say we have another trade that comes out at 3.18% per day. And another one that has a loss of 2.4% per day. And so then to calculate the strategy expected return, we simply average out these values to produce the required metric that we need. So in this case, it would be those three returns on the daily basis divided by three, which gives us a value of 1.04. And so as part of this calculation, you can see there are many similarities with how this is performed using the standard approach of modern portfolio theory. But instead of looking at individual daily returns, we're looking at those values as calculated from a trade history of a particular strategy. Now, what this does mean, of course, is that if you're trading multiple strategies in the same account, 
they will have different expected return values. And so just like we've seen with a traditional stock portfolio, where each individual asset has its own expected return values, this is exactly analogous to that. But by taking this approach, means that whether a trade was long or short is irrelevant, it doesn't matter. All of the metrics are still processed in a way that enable them to be used within all of the calculations that we've studied in previous episodes. So in the next episode, I'll be looking specifically at portfolio construction and what we need to do in relation to the portfolio changing on a rapid basis. Then we'll look at the calculation timeframes and recalculation intervals for this shorter time frame context. And then finally, in episode 35, which will be the final episode of this series, we'll cover monetary weightings and lot sizes in a bit more detail. And I know we have covered this in the past, but one of the things we didn't do was cover the conversions that are required based on different asset calculation currencies. So I'll go over that in full to give you that fuller understanding. Okay, so thanks for your time again. If you're not familiar with DarwinX already, then it will really be worth your while finding out more about the services that we can offer to you. And you can do that by clicking on the DarwinX logo at the bottom right now. But now, until next time, trade safe.